And uh, we're going to start next with Roger Rainville, who's from Waterview Farm, now a research farm. He posts all of, almost all of our research plots. Um, we had 2,000 research plots this year there. I think some of you came up to the field day out there this summer. Uh, we have a field day every August to highlight all the work that we're doing. And we thank Roger for putting up with us. Um, so <clears throat> he built our, our three-quarter, one-acre size hop yard. And he went through um, a, a real learning process to figure out how to build this. And we thought it would probably be useful to a lot of people here to, to hear how he did it. And um, so we invited him to come and talk about that. So thanks, Roger. And can we get the last Thanks, Helen. Uh, she's right. When she asked me, if, first she said, uh, how about we do something with hops? And I really heard of it, but didn't know what it was. And she said, how about building a hops yard? And I said, well, I'm going to go look and see what the hell a hops yard is. And then she said, how about giving a PowerPoint? So I looked that up to see what that was. So I, I, think, I think I figured it out. And I asked John to, if he could just humor me when I started explaining how I built this hops yard. It means a lot of help. And uh, we probably didn't get it right, but the pictures look like we got it close. So I guess with that, we'll just go ahead and start it. Uh, basically, uh, I'll just give you an inventory of what we used, and it may not be right. Uh, we probably might want to do things differently, but we'll see if we can get it close. Basically, the main thing is getting some good poles. Uh, we tried to get out in uh, the Midwest or out in Wisconsin, or Washington State. I mean, they, there's a lot of uh, pine out there that's real tall, and it's readily available. Around here, it's pretty hard to find poles that are already made. Uh, for four by four poles, we were looking at $80 a piece, because we have to get some 20 footers. And uh, when I put there 20 to 22 feet, it's because the outside poles are a little bit longer, and you'll see why we did that. And uh, with the research has shown, that's what we need to do. So we've got all our poles. And uh, then uh, we needed something to pull our cables, so this got this piece of equipment. Go ahead. Just peel the poles or leave the bar No, we left the bar on them. We left the bar on them, and, and it's a good point because with the cedar, uh, I mean, I've been farming on this farm for over 30 years, and we've got cedar poles that we put in the ground 30 years ago, and it's still good and solid. Depending if you use red or white cedar, red cedar is supposedly better. Uh, speaking, about, speaking about pulling the poles, there was... There were some uh, uh, sites that I looked at that where they used uh, just soft wood and they charred it, and apparently charring the wood will help preserve it longer. I figured that I'm going to be long gone before this pulls rot, so I told the kids if they take it over someday, that's their problem. So anyway, that's why we left it like that. Well, they're all gone. They didn't want to stick around for the hard work. So, so anyways, what well, we ended up, this haven grip is basically a tool that's used to grab onto the cable and you just see I put the prices that we paid for it so you have a good idea what uh, what our cost was. This is our actual cost. Then we use a 5 16th aircraft cable. There's a lot of talk about using uh, wire or cable. Everybody said, well, use the cable. Everybody I talked to that's growing hops said you don't want to get up in the morning and see your hops yard on the ground. So we went with the 5 16th cable and after coming back from Washington State, we built this plenty rugged because they didn't build it quite that rugged out there. So that's good. I'd rather overkill it than underkill it. For this, just under an acre of hops, we had to use 6,750 feet of cable. And then, of course, cable cutters, if you're going to do one of these this way, you definitely need, need them also. <clears throat> we used turnbuckles, and, and many of them that we saw didn't. But I said, well, we want to keep this fairly straight. A few of the hops yards that I looked at, the wires have stretched, and I think these cables probably won't stretch much because the tensile strength is pretty high, but a lot of them, the cables have stretched. <clears throat> the biggest complaint I heard was that we got to retighten everything up. So I said, well, let's get some. I mean, some of this is a little overkill, and uh, the reason is it's, I've learned, and Heather's taught me, that you do not want to lose a study when you're doing a study. So I said, I don't care if we spend a little bit more money, but we're going to do it so we don't have the something collapse and then we lose a study that you spent all year putting the effort in. So we did overkill it a little bit, but I will, time will tell. And then of course cable clamps and uh, we use a 
5 inch, 48 inch long uh, ground anchors. And those were good for two ton a piece. And uh, there are some talk about how easy these are, how hard they are to use, and we'll talk about that as we get a little bit longer. And the eye bolts, I'll show you what we did with that. It was something we decided to try for the top of the poles, and you'll see what, I'm, what I mean by that when I want to look at it again. Of course, come along, and it took 300 cable clamps, and we started using a hand ratchet just by hand. And my neighbor had one of these 18 volt impact wrenches, and wow, what a difference! <laughs> so they're worth buying if you're going to, even for an anchor. Um, to screw the anchors in the ground, I mean, these are designed to do it with a rod and turn it by hand. So we just made up this little uh, contraption here that fits over a uh, pulse hole digger, and then we just set the head of the uh, ground anchor in it, and we let the tractor screw them into the ground. And we uh, tried using a 3.0 inch pulse hole digger and we realized in a hurry that if we we're going to get the depth we wanted to stay below frost which was four feet that we need something a little heavier duty so we ended up renting a commercial one from a local dealer and it was $339 for the weekend and we set all our we got plenty of people and we set all our poles up one weekend so it was well worth it and with a three point hitch pulse hole digger and a tractor there's no way we could have got those holes dug because we've got ledge and stone and everything else just something showing how that went on our three point hitch tractor. I mean, that, that worked really good, saved a lot of time, especially if you've got 30, 40 anchors to screw in. One thing, too, we noticed that we bought extra anchors for the simple reason is that we thought we might break some for some reason. Well, we were getting them in the ground two feet, and they would just twist like a pretzel. So, what we did is took that three point hitch pulse hole digger, put a small auger on it, went down two feet with the auger, and then drilled the rest of the auger in the ground so it got into the hard pan and then we just filled the hole back up and our thought was is that through the winter that the snow and everything and the rains we get would compact it and they would hold so like again time would tell so we're hoping that it works like we want uh, of course the tractor we had for the poles and then what we did is it took us 10 yards of stone what we after we dug our holes 12 inches big set our poles in and we put stone all around uh, with the hole and not dirt so that the frost wouldn't push them off and we, we built a lot of fence uh, and uh, this seemed to work good. I went out and looked at the yard, the poles haven't moved and we've had a lot of frost this winter so so far it's working pretty good and what the stone does is it just uh, sheds the water away so that the frost can't grab the pole and push it up. Then we had to get up in the air uh, so we decided, uh, Jared on the left there, he works for me, he's a real smart young fella, and he said, God, why don't we take a, we had two 250-gallon uh, tote containers that we use when we do our biodiesel, and he said, why don't we just pull a container out, weld it on an old bucket that we had for the tractor, and make ourselves a lift. So we did, and that's our lift, and that seemed to work pretty good. It worked really good. So I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, we don't need to build them that way, so when we went to Washington, this is what it looks like in Washington. So I said, if we can build something that looks like this, then we probably accomplish what we're trying to do. So anyway, we'll see if this is what. So this is our layout, and it's kind of odd, the reason it's laid out this way, and there's a reason for it. We were going to make it square. Uh, we didn't set our poles to what the standard is around the country, because we, we've had to, we set it up so that our equipment would fit in between the rows, so we're five by seven is our for our, our hops, seven foot long, five foot apart, and we got ten feet in between so that we can drive in. So we kind of set it up so hopefully it'll work good for the equipment that we have so we don't have to buy more equipment when we go in and, and uh, till and harvest or whatever. Um, yeah, I guess the next one. Oh, the reason it's like this is where it says poles, ground anchors, cables, there's a knoll there sets up about that much higher than the rest of the ground. And uh, go ahead to the next one, I think, Heather shows it. So this is taking a little picture above it, and to the left, there's that knoll there, and we wanted to keep everything consistent because it's a research trial. Now this is a 50-acre alfalfa field, and for the last 30 years, I've spent thousands of dollars clearing hedgerows, stones, everything, so we can make a nice open field. Then Heather said, this is an ideal place to put a hops yard. 
So we cut the field in half and we threw our hop guy right in the middle of our best alfalfa field. That's how committed I am to this research. That's it. That's the hard part. It's not the hard part. It's because it's less painful. But the main thing, there's a point to this, and, and I've said this for years and years growing other crops. If you try something new, don't put it in the worst spot you got. Put it in your best spot you got. And you'll see if it works. Because I've seen so many farmers, not with hops, but with everything else, that when you're growing something, they say, well, let's try it in the middle of my old pasture out there because I'm not using it. Well, that's, you're not going to get the best results. Put it where you get the best results of the crop you're growing. So I hope that we, that holds true with this case, too. Um, one thing, what we did, just we laid out all our poles, all our uh, flags for where we wanted our poles to begin with. Um, it's hard to see there, but we got everybody involved. That's my wife and then Jared that works for me, putting in the uh, ice screws in the top of the poles. And as we go off, you'll see what my thought was. And I don't know if it's a good one or not. But And one thing we did before we really chose that site, we went out and dug a bunch of perk holes to see if, because we've got ledge there. And I said, well, we don't want to get half of this yard built and then not be able to build the rest of it because we can't dig holes. And we, did, we were able to dig everywhere. so. That's one thing just to try to make sure you go out and check and see if you can put poles. And of course we wanted to get four feet deep and we couldn't do it with a three point hitch because we just didn't have the torque and this has got down pressure and everything. And I think we only had like three holes out of 65 or 70 poles that we weren't able to get down four feet. So I think we're good for the frost. Um, it's kind of self-explanatory just setting the poles with just two people. And these are the outside poles. Now, everybody goes by, they see the outside poles leaning, and they're wondering why. I said, it doesn't matter. That's the way they do it out in the Midwest. So <laughs> what they told me to do, so I'm going to do it. They've been doing it a lot longer than we have. But I, I, I know why, because when you cable them down, your torque and everything, and Chris worked with me quite a bit, I, I kind of suggested what I thought we needed for poles, so I got the engineer to design it, and we were pretty damn close. So I guess the old farmer had it figured out. But we used the tractor and how we did it. And this was, uh, uh, Rick Peterson was one suggested, he said just dig your hole big enough, take a tractor bucket and just keep pushing it back until you get the right angle. And that's what we did. So we didn't drill the holes in angle or nothing, we just used a tractor and, and uh, I mean we're using tamarack, it's a, it's a hard wood, but it's, it's a soft wood, but it's, it's a hard soft wood. And it has longevity, so that's, we had some uh, uh, locust that's on the farm, but it was way too big to use. So this we use a tamarack, and I, I think we'll be all right for as long as we want this yard. <coughs> now this is something we tried that I didn't see anywhere, but it just made sense at the time uh, to pull our outside cables. We just went out with our lift, just drilled a hole through each pole, and we just threaded our cable through to hold it up there. And I thought was that when you put the pressure on it, we're pulling against the pole, and it shouldn't slide. And, there are folks using staples and other things, and it might have been just as easy, but we wanted to try this, and it looks, seems to work pretty good. Then again, I said we haven't put a whole load on, so a little time will tell. Uh, <clears throat> we did use another tractor because we were at our spools, and we got 500 and 1,000 foot spools, and that stuff is, those that haven't hauled it around, it's pretty heavy, so the three, it's hard to tell, but <coughs> the three point hitch on the tractor. We just mounted a pipe across and then we just pulled our cable up to the top and we had a pulley that we ran it through and to pull it across. So it's, you kind of really need something like that if you're going to stretch a lot of cable. Uh, when we built our frame to put on our bucket, the pole, the pipe on the right, we just put an eye up there so that we could uh, put our um, cable grip on it so we could hook our cable. Um, and use the tractor to pull the cable because you start pulling two, three hundred feet, it's pretty hard to pull that cable. So this seemed to work out pretty good. These are the things that we went out, did some work, came back, added something, went out, did some work, came back, added something, and this is the final result. So for everything that we have here, I mean, we don't have much, we don't have hardly any money in it. It's just time and welding. And I always wanted, I love welding, so I was hoping something wouldn't work so I can come back and do some more welding. But it's, it seemed to work pretty good. And uh, just, if you don't know what a haven grip, I didn't know what a haven grip was, it was a cable grabber. But that's basically what it does, just hook it onto the cable. It's only a half hour, but you said you're in a hurry, so.
So that's the eye bolt on top, and I thought we would just run our cable through the eye bolts, and they're fairly inexpensive, and uh, then we just pull it through one, hook it on our, our, our cable grabber there, whatever. Jared would drive the tractor ahead and get the next one, just quickly unhooks it through the next hole and on through all the poles. Well, then we decided... Well, that's kind of, well, these are just the uh, these are the cables, and uh, those are the uh, turnbuckles. And one thing that uh, Rick Peterson told me is that his guys kept hooking them when they were mowing around the yard. So we said, well, let's paint some red on them so that we can see them a little better. So I, I'm glad we did because uh, my neighbor rents some of that land, and he goes by mowing about 30 miles an hour. <laughs> And if they weren't painted, he'd have them hooked down or something would be wrong, so. We're going to see what you do in a minute. All right, all right well, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Just wait. All right. I'm actually going to go back so people can see that in their picture. You start with the beginning run of it. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can do it. I don't know what I'm trying to do. Yeah, because also an engineer. We learned that last year. We also learned about Rosie's job. Yeah, and she got it back. Uh, I'm not doing that today, so no. sorry. <laughs> um, still can't see it. <clears throat> so anyways, you guys want me to continue? Okay. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I guess I pulled in more there, but... So anyways, the, the cables, I, I think this is probably one of the most important things, is put some paint on some of these cables, especially for somebody driving around mowing. I know this is rugged because got I got one tractor, 150 horse, and uh, I had a plow on the back and I went around and turned too sharp and the plow point caught the cable and it stopped the tractor, but it didn't, didn't pull the cable down. So I think, you know, we, we, did, a little, we did a little trial. Okay, with 150 you horse. Didn't tell me about this trial. I, I know, but I know who I got to deal with if this fails. So I said, if the tractor can't pull it down, change there the hospital. So that's when I said we need to paint them so we can see them. They were painted. I was the one driving. So, well, that's just showing. It's hard to tell, but that it, it stands out pretty good, especially in the in the hay field there. So. It's a, see the hot cables? They look like the ones from which Washington. So we're we're close. And basically, I'm almost done here. So, I mean, it's the it looks just like those out there. So it should work the same, right? Because it looks the same. <laughs> so hopefully, when we get hops on them, uh, they'll hold. So I guess we'll. I got a little budget here on you know adding up everything, what it costs, which is the next slide. <coughs> so we got the cable, the poles, the turnbuckles, ground acres, uh, the cable pullers, cutters clamps, 10 yards of stone. So the, our total material cost for this, just under an acre, was 5996 So we're close to what John was saying were their yards over there. Now, we had 65 total man hours. That's everybody that was helping put this up. It took us 65 hours to build it and 48 hours of tractor use. Now, I didn't put the price in there because we work a lot cheaper than what they do out in, or maybe more money, but... We get two fifty an hour. I don't know what you guys try to do. That's what Heather. Would you give yourself a raise? I'd say, I know I would say that if I said the price. That's why I didn't put it there. So basically, uh, you know, I mean, we we built this, and and I left the price out for the man hour and everything because it could vary farm to farm or whatever you do. So you put whatever you want on there, whatever you figure your labor. Not everybody works as high as you do. Two fifty, I know. God, when I told my wife I'm getting two fifty an hour, she just started booking flights to California, <laughs> and everywhere else, and vacations. And so basically, that's our construction costs. Next. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And that's available on So this is this is what we hope that our hops here will look like late summer. This is out in Washington.